All right, folks. So today we've got a little special thing going on. Uh, this is kind of our daily routine that we do here in the mornings in July during the uh, San Fermin uh, Festival, which is the big run, one of the biggest running the bull festivals in the world. Actually, it takes place in Pamplona, and that's where Sandro went to uh, nursing college there. Um, today we're going to watch a little bit of it, and then we got a special treat. We're going to hop in the car. And we're going to drive all the way up to Pamplona after all this run craziness is over. Uh, we're going to drive around and walk you guys through the city, show you what's there, what you can do, and what it's kind of like there without having to go there and do the run. Okay? All right, so stand by. We'll be there shortly. So this is what the real Basque Country really looks like. Once you get outside of the cities and you get up more in the mountains, you can see how quite beautiful this is. And this is just a little overview um, or, or stop with a photographic area that you can go on the way towards Pamplona. That's where we're going from uh, from where we live. Like I said, we're on our way to Pamplona today to watch, see some of the festivities. Even though I don't necessarily, I don't condone the uh, the bull run or the bull fighting or anything like that. But there's a lot more to that whole festival than just that part. So that's why we want to go there and give you guys a uh, an opportunity to see what other things are there and what it's all about. So we're here, uh, we, we just made it back or to Pamplona, uh, which the original name of this town is called Irunya. That's why you guys, if you were doing this drive, you would see the signs that say Irunya Pamplona. Now Irunya in the Euskara language, in the Basque language means city. And this was one of the big Basque cities until the Romans, apparently. The Romans did come in and conquered this area. And what we have behind us, if you guys can see back over there, are parts of the uh, old Roman fort uh, that, that was in the city. Now this is where Sandra here uh, went to nursing school. She lived here for how many years? Seven, seven years. Seven years lived here. Yeah. Um, so she's going to share some some ins, insider knowledge for this area. Definitely, little these little secret gems uh, that she has. Okay. Uh, well, you know this. We will make another video and talk about you know what to see really in Pamplona when it's not during the festival of San Fermin. But since today we're here just to kind of focus on that, uh, the first thing to know is. How, how to get here these days. So the best way to get here from San Sebastian, of course, is by bus or train, so you don't have to worry about parking. But if you decide to go uh, by car, uh, the best place to leave the car is in the parking lot of the bus station, because that's the newest one, the biggest one, and it is a little bit outside the, the, the real center of the, of the festivities. So that's a very good place to park. Another place to park will be uh, all the parking lots uh, by the hospitals and just have a nice 15-20 uh, minute park walk about that. Uh, to the uh, to the center of town so that's the best way to get here and now we're gonna go uh, to the center and see yep, the, we'll uh, the, and see the atmosphere okay. and, and explain a little bit about what San Fermin is about. So just a little bit of a, a couple of little tidbits more here um, when you drive I do recommend using Waze um, when, whenever you're driving in Europe as well, uh, it, do, it does point out lots of uh, things, tells you where the radar's at, things like that. Remember, most of the time if you're speeding and through a radar zone, they're going to mail you the ticket. You wouldn't really get pulled over most of the time. I've only seen that happen very, very few times. Also, the um, with events like this, you can probably uh, be expected that you're going to get stopped by the police uh, because they're looking for, for drunk drivers uh, so because be every, careful, everybody yeah. comes... Everybody comes here and stays the night, uh, and, and they lives. drink all night, and then they stay here for the run in the morning. Not everybody, but uh, the younger crowd, I would say. Um, and then they leave, and they leave after the run. Right. So when everybody's leaving the town, that's when all the DUI checkpoints are there. So, so be careful on you, that. You may have some traffic because of that. All right. So right here, we're we're just about into the old town here. <clears throat> What we're going to do now is we're going to kind of talk about the outfits that you're going to see everybody wearing. The, the white with the red scarves and the red, uh, I don't know, the, the cummerbund type thing uh, that's on there. I was asking earlier, what's the origin to that? Because I, I do like to know those types of questions. And we, we kind of did some investigating. We found out there's, there's a lot of theories out there. Uh, they don't really know for sure why everybody that. But one of that theory is, is that because this is like their fair or their circus and again if you think back to old roman times when they would have their circus 
Uh, that's when all the gladiators would come into the arenas and things like that. And that was where the blood sports happened. And again, that is a kind of a part of this where they have the blood sports. That's uh, that's a leftover from the Roman Empire, the, the bullfighting. Um, and it was a way to include everyone, even from the city or people that were visitors from the outside. Uh, they could all dress the same and have kind of the same experience and not be singled out as outsiders. Right, and it's also simple enough for everybody. Everybody has a white shirt, a white pant, and their closet. So it's, and, and, the, and the red scarf can be bought in really in the streets, post, or in any store for a very few bucks. So it's a way to make it simple for you know, for everybody, for the from the people here in the city and from the, uh, all the visitors that come to this festival. Something that you'll notice um, as as the truck passes by is that there is lots of uh, cleanup going on right now. So, if you can imagine, this party really the the night before the bull run is when everybody's out here drinking and partying and everything like that and. And as you can imagine, the, the, the streets get nasty with all kinds of, you know, from people over drinking and people throwing their trash on the ground. So cleanup is a big part of this after the run. Um, you know, I, I hate to say this, but I've, I've lived close to New Orleans and I've been down to the French Quarter after uh, Mardi Gras and things like that. And That's the part they forget about is the cleanup down there. So you can smell the French Quarter uh, before you even get to it. Um, not so much here. They clean it right away. So this is kind of some of the fair stuff that's going on. You can come in here and do these raffles, um, win things. Um, again, it's kind of like the fair uh, that you would have at most cities in America, but it's just their little way of doing the fair. They've got rides. They have um, fireworks displays now. They didn't have that when Sandra was, was here. Um, so these are uh, little little games that they're doing. We are waiting for our little microphone adapter, so hopefully you guys can hear me okay now. It should be it should be here today in the mail. But look, some people have worn brooms. I'm not sure uh, how that plays out. That I guess you win a broom. Who would have thought? Okay. okay, so here we are in, in Plaza de del Castillo. Castillo, which is kind of like the, uh, means castle, basically. Um, this is where kind of the center of a lot of action is, I'm sure, at night. Um, Place where everybody meets with their friends and their families to do the different uh, activities of the festivities. Uh, there is always, uh, every year, they come up with an official program. Uh, this is not only a, a festivity about the bull. I mean, there are plenty of other things that go on every day uh, during the whole uh, time. Like, uh, for example, you have Looks like theaters. Concerts. Looks like a concert goes yeah, on right concerts. here. Concerts. Uh, you got uh, games for children. You also have a competition of fireworks at night. You got dances, folkloric. Now, um, now, when she says a yeah. competition for fireworks, she means it's kind of like the one we have in Donosti right. or San Sebastian, where these are pyrotechnic companies that come in from around the globe and they kind of do a competition. So right. every night you're going to have a different pyrotechnics company come in right. and and have their display going on. Okay. Yeah. So there's uh, what's W? Oh, water closet. Yeah. Okay. So you the big W C. You see that? That's. Uh, that's a temporary public restroom, right. which is kind of important with the amount of wine that's drank here, I would say. <laughs> Definitely. True, true. Very true. guess that keeps people from going on the street. Very good. And now we're going to go eat something. Yes. So we're going to show you a little bit the old part of town, and we're going to go eat a uh, little, um, you know, middle day snack, and uh, let's go. Or what you might call a pincho. All right, so here we are on one side of the Plaza del Castillo. You have La Calle de San Nicolás. And or St. Nicholas Street. And right. if you look up there on the sign, you'll notice Calais, San Nicolas. And below that, you'll see Calea. Now, when you see Calea, that means it's in Euskera. And the top one is in Spanish. So they've got both languages, just like in the old town in San Sebastian. You've got both languages covered here. And, okay, so this is a street 
very vibrant and this is a street where you find very good uh, bars during the day to stop by and have like a little pincho, like a little tapa, like a little snack, a casserole, things like that. So this is a very good street uh, to come uh, during the day. Just one of hundreds, I'm sure, uh, of bars that are here. And you see the, the tile work in the floor. Remember, this town pretty much makes all of its tourism money in one week. So everything really revolves around this uh, festival. Um, a little bit later, we're going to talk about why they actually run with the bulls. Okay? So, great stuff here. Stand by. As you see, they got Pabst Blue Ribbon up in here. That's quite funny. I'll bet you this town never, never uh, envisioned that it would come to this one day. So these guys that are playing here, that's a traditional... Uh, it's, a Basque, it's a Basque instrument called Chalaparta. Chalaparta. And that guy, we got one of his CDs actually. He plays in San Sebastian, uh, in the old town, and the uh, in the summer months. Apparently other than this week. Because up here he's up because there's more people here. does not sleep from the 6th of July to the 14th. Always something going on at all times. So we see the one of the barriers right here. Uh, they'll open that, they'll swing that out and it will kind of block off this section right here. You see the the uh, the things in the floor. Okay, that's where they're going to put the barriers and the, and the fence to keep the bulls in on this side of the street. We're going to see them better later. We're going to go check that out. So right now what's about to happen is they're going to run, the, for the kids, they're going to do a little run with those uh, bull heads on a, on a bicycle wheel. That's what everybody's waiting for. So right down there is where the uh, San Fermin statue is. And right here is where the guy got gored this morning. Right in, right on this wall is where he got it. Uh, lucky enough for him, and I'm sure they washed everything off well, but lucky enough for him, the Red Cross station, or the, the ones that kind of help you when you get hurt, the EMT section, uh, is, is right there. I mean, it's it's like right there. So, luckily for for him, I guess. Right in there. So we're gonna go up top of this. We're gonna try to get some more footage, some more video, so you guys can see it from up top. And we'll show you the corral. We'll talk about that because this is where the, this is where it starts. It starts off in the corral here, um, and again, that, that goes back to, what, 18-something? Okay, 1800s? so the first, yeah, well, the entierros, the run of the bulls, were practiced, actually, from all the way in the 16th century. However, they didn't become regulated until 1867, where the city hall of Pamplona 
made them legal, although not encouraged. Um, since the festivities of San Fermin become actually festivities, which was in 1922, there have been 16 people dead by um, by gore. You know, by, by, by yeah, dying from by, the bull gore. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so it's, it's it's actually not too bad. But I mean, 16 lives that have been taken uh, by um, you know. And you and you experienced one. Yeah, I did. I did actually. I covered the uh, three or four years as a nurse, as a nurse student then, as a nurse later. Uh, here in the mornings, and uh, mine was the victim in 1995. That was one of the last yeah, Americans who got killed here. One. Actually, the last American that was killed here. Okay. So, so yep. there's been, there was one, there was just a few more since then, but yes. Uh, this is, yeah, this is not a very safe practice. <laughs> I'm, yes, I must say. Yeah, so. definitely, I don't. Yes. Not I would never do it no. uh, myself. Um, but, uh, you know, I just don't believe. I, not that it's it's dangerous or anything like that, which it really is. But I, I really don't condone the, uh, you know. I think that they, these animals are molested myself. But you know, to, to each his own. I would say. Yeah. Yes. So out. there's the corral down there. Okay, and, they, and this is where they run right up the street. La Cuesta de Santo Domingo. La Cuesta de Santo Domingo, she says. And then right up the street. And then from there on we go. We're going to try to walk the whole thing today. So here we are, right at the entrance to the uh, to the arena. Um, again, this is uh, where it all ends, and it definitely ends for the bulls in here. Again, that's the sad part that uh, you know a lot of people don't like to think about, but reality is, as you see probably in the signage that I just pointed out, that uh, all those bulls that run in today, other than the oxen that run with the bulls, uh, those six bulls that run in, uh, they are dead by the end of the day. So that's the sad part of it. Uh, but there's a lot more to this town during this particular week than just that part of it. So we're going to still show you some more as we go. So as we go along through here, uh, we're, we're right outside the uh, Plaza de Toros. Um, basically, there's ticket scalpers everywhere that are trying to sell us tickets that we can go into the bullfights. As you can imagine, they're probably uh, sold out. Um, been to one bullfight in South America. I didn't care for it that much, so I would probably never do that again myself again but to each his own the uh nice little park here you can buy plenty of merchandise it looks like a uh, nice little playground area for the kids um so there's, there's a good bit of stuff going on it's nice and cool right here today in the shade it is kind of dry here the climate i would say is more it's not very humid here it's uh it seems to be more like uh southern california new mexico uh texas areas like that as opposed to where we live which is a little more like um, you know over in the other part of the Basque Country in Gipuzkoa where we live it's a little bit more like um, Seattle Oregon or Vancouver if you're familiar with that so it does it kind of mists and drizzles and rains all year long uh, during the winter months and the summer months can be a little bit humid but it never gets really hot okay so I'm gonna spin you guys around so you can see what I'm seeing because you're probably tired of looking at my mug or maybe you could look at that. That's a lot better. But here we go. Okay. 
Yeah, all the arenas around. And you, they're divided in two halves. One is called Shade, and those are the expensive tickets. And one is called Sun, and those are cheaper. So uh, that's something to take into account if you decide to come and, and witness one of these uh, ball festivals. Nice mosaic. Yeah, right also there. the entries, as there. you can see, see the entries are organized uh, following the alphabet. So you got the gates A, B, C, D, E. Okay, here we're showing the E one. Yep. That's the way you, you should just find your seat because the seats have numbers. And they have numbers on the seats. Okay, so we're going to wrap up our time here in Pamplona. Um, it was pretty cool for me to see this. This was the first time I've actually, after living here for quite a few years now, since 2011, this was my first time ever coming up here to, to see these events. Um, and again, our, our little town we live in is just as many, many towns. They have their own, basically, like their fair or, or their uh, uh, little carnival for their town. And they kind of plan for it each year. And it, they're always lasting about a week long. Our town has it. The town across from us has it. San Sebastian has it. Everybody has it. Now, a lot of people think this is the, they call this, you know, the running of the bulls. There have been running of the bull festivals throughout the year. They typically start around Easter. Um, it's not just in this town, they're everywhere. It's just that this town is particularly famous because Ernest Hemingway came Correct. here nine times during the 20s. And so that is why Sun Fermin Festival became so internationally known. Right. You've seen the book, The Sun Also Rises. Right. Okay. Right. When he was coming here, he was also making his little trips into San Sebastian as well. So this uh, guy had a pretty interesting life. <laughs> Apparently he had a pretty good, good, pretty good life, I would say. Um, so the uh, again more to the corral part where the bulls run through the city again that was uh, I, I just showed you a video or, or pictures uh, that are on there um, as to why that came about you know you probably couldn't drive in a wagon or, or nowadays in a truck you saw how narrow these streets are to get those animals into the arena so it kind of started out with them uh, running you know they would kind of put them in there in the evening before the run um, and then the next morning, and it back in the day, it started at six o'clock. Okay, so we're gonna wrap it up now. Um, and again, if you guys enjoyed this material, um, we plan on doing lots of other trips, of course, not just here, not just in the Basque Country, Spain, France, Germany, all over. Again, I hate to keep harping on this, but we really need subscribers. We right. really need people to like our videos uh, so we can get this thing going and help you guys out, you guys that wanna come and visit uh, this area. Um, we're going to uh, also cover our travels in, in America because we do travel in America quite often. Um, we travel kind of uniquely, so we're going to show you guys a little bit of that as much as we can actually without uh, violating any of the, the laws that we have to deal by uh, by flying the way we do. Uh, but thanks for thanks for subscribing if you have. Uh, you can you know if you guys want to help us out just directly, we've got a PayPal account that we'll list in the uh, in the comments below or in the uh, and section the below. Yeah. Um, and thanks again for watching. And enjoy being here. Enjoy doing these things for you guys. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon.